One, two, one, two, three, four. Almost a weekend and you don't know what to do. Or you just need something fun to listen to. So, so fun. Yes, we're on the so air. So and the gang's all here, all things on the South Side. We're listening to the South Side Fun. Looking for the best South Side breweries. Or you might just need an awesome place to eat. Southside Pond! Greenwood Evergreen! Southside Blue Island Beverly. Pay listen, all sub to You're tuned in to the Southside Pod. Southside Pod! Old Plum Midlothian! Southside Pod! Old Fort Chicago Ridge, Flossmore, and Bridgeview. You're listening to Southside Pod! The big day is upon us. Today's the day? Today's the day. A day late, uh, and I'm going to explain why the show came out on a Friday instead of a Thursday. It's been weeks. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and Southside Pot, of course, brought to you by Family Waterproofing Solutions, named one of the Southland's best for the last several years for Boeing Walls, Window Wells, Foundation Crack Repair, anything that has to do with your foundation, keeping water away from it, out of your house. It's very important to do that. It's a big investment a home, and you want to take care of it. Family Waterproofing Solutions wants to help you. They have express service now. If you know what you want, you see the cost right on their website. You order and you schedule it on site immediately for quick service. Who else does that? Or give them a call 24-7 at 708-330-4466. Mention Southside Pod. Get an additional discount. Your basement's best defense is at FamilyDry.com. It's been, it's been several weeks of the Battle of the South Side, and by the end of the show, we will reveal whether or not Blue Island or Lamont won the first annual South Side Pod Battle of the South Side. What a battle, by the way. Blue Island, Lamont, come on. It was, it, you know, first of all, there's a lot of connection between these two places. Yeah. You wouldn't believe it, you know? I have a personal connection to Lamont. I grew up there, and my wife grew up in Blue Island. Exactly. So, right? I'm torn. It's a, it's a house divided. A house divided. Right. <laughs> what did she think about your crack about Blue Island? Uh, on the last show. talk about that? Yeah, we do, because we got... <laughs> yeah, we do. We got, a, we got an angry email. We got an angry email. And here on, oh, here on no. Southside Pod, we, we do make fun of everybody. We've made fun of the Elsa pool yeah. in the Jewel parking right. lot. And uh, we picked on hometown a little bit, and then their mayor came on, and, and, and like he was fun. He jumped on here, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. We kind of take little digs at everybody, right? We're... Right. You called Blue Island stabby. Yeah, I mean, and <laughs> did I say that? You, you you finally pushed the button. Well, okay. all right. <laughs> Let me explain before you you called Blue Island get... stabby. I look at it. You know, you got Lamont and Blue Island in the final. They're like uh, in in the limelight, right? And yeah. just like you know. Jimmy Fallon or Kimmel or anything like that. You know, they make fun of celebrities. They make yeah, fun of the funny, president, right? But they're funny. They're, oh, it's true. Um, <laughs> so I can make fun a little bit of the of the of the towns involved. Uh, they should. I mean, they should be honored that I, we chose them because we roast the ones we love. Right. Right. right exactly. <laughs> exactly. How am I doing? How am I doing? Here's the thing. In the end, I don't know the results yet. I asked our social media manager, Faith. I see the envelope. Who uh, I asked her to 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 seal it in an envelope. She told me that it was very close because remember, it's the Instagram votes, it's the Twitter votes, yes. and then there is the link on Facebook where in every contest, the majority of the votes were on the Google form through the Facebook. You know what? Link. I and Maybe the listeners figured this out, but I didn't want to say it too early on and we can say it now. I didn't like on the Google form how you could just put any email address you wanted in there. You could have voted a thousand times if you wanted to. Can I tell you a funny story about that? Sure. So Faith gives me all the email addresses so that we can add these people to our contact form so we can send them stuff about what's going on with Southside Pod, right? And so I have like thousands of email addresses now all of a sudden that I've added in. It's insane. And I sent out the first thing that, hey, the show is going to be delayed a day. Mm -hmm. And one came back with... A, a person saying, I no longer use this email address. I moved to Oregon. And I just couldn't stop laughing. I'm like, this person knew that email address wasn't any good. And they yeah. used it anyway on the so Google form. It. I thought that was hysterical how it got sent back. So remember this next year, vote early, vote often, right? It's, it's, <laughs> exactly. It's, it's the Southside way. You can vote early and vote often in this thing. <laughs> and, it, you know, first of all, it was really fun. I think if we do it next year, uh, we involve more, more areas 
We yeah. involve a little bit more of the actual city, although I don't know why I'd want to hang out in the city because I'll be honest with you, we got a lot of complaints. Yeah, like, oh, why, aren't you, why aren't you involving this? And I'm like, I don't know. How many people really go and, and do things in those places? Right. And we have spent so much time out in the more suburban or at least Beverly, Mount Greenwood. Absolutely. And so that's kind of where we went. But you know what? We're going to try to expand. We're going to try to make a bigger area of the south side. We're going to expand a little north, expand a little uh, uh, east to uh, kind of get more areas in next year. I, I want to say, what do we have in this tournament? We had something like 18 teams I in this tournament. I think so, yeah. At least 32 if not 32 with some play-in games next and, year. And can we talk about something? I'm usually not the guy that needs a pat on the back, but remember when you were uh, very hungover on the, on the show and you needed uh, material? And you, yeah. asked, and you asked us maybe to come up with something, right. and I came up with this idea. Yeah, I wasn't and hungover. Like, oh, I was this hammered. Is, this is dumb. I wasn't hungover. You I was said hammered. this is dumb. It was St. Patrick's and Day. And it blew up. <laughs> <laughs> so you're welcome. What was a rabbit's name in Bambi? It was Thumper. What's this called in radio speak? It's called a bumper. It's a bumper. Sitting down here at the Nine Foot Homemade Oak Bar, we have uh, guests that are new, but one of them I feel like uh, knows me because you've been you've been listening to this show for for how long, Katie? Probably for the last six months or so. Really? Every Thursday. You're a big Southside Pod fan, huh? I am. It's so fun. You're sitting here and you're explaining the way and you're like, you're like, ah, oh, you got to listen to this. This is how this works. You got to got to check these guys out. Who do you think is going to win the Battle of the Southside? I'm all for Team Blue Island. All Team Blue Island Blue here. We're going to be announcing it in a little bit here on the show. I can't wait. You're, 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 are you a Blue Islander? Or you're you're Beverly, right? I'm a right? Blue Island boarder, 118th and Rockwell. You're right over there. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I want to tell everybody a little bit about you and why you're sitting down here and introduce Wayne. Uh, Katie Regalado is from the Beverly Theater Guild. I got that right? You did. Okay. And uh, you guys have a performance coming up in about a week. We're going to talk about that. And then Wayne here next to you, Wayne Wendell, is the president of the Guild, and you uh, suckered him into coming down to the nine foot homemade oak bar, but he's got a beer in front of him, and now he looks relaxed and he's I mean, ready to yeah, go. How are you, it. Wayne? Doing great, thank you. So, you as the president, I'll ask you this: How long has this theater guild been around in the Beverly neighborhood? Uh, the Beverly Theater Guild was established in 1963. 1963. 1963. 1963. 1963. And how long have you been doing it? 30 must years. Been, must have been a while. 30, 30 plus years. I would think if you're the president, you've been there a while. <laughs> Actually, Chris, yeah. we're the oldest um, community theater organization in the city limits of Chicago. And you were really telling, cool. I assumed right away you were at the Beverly Arts Center and you're not. We're not. We no, are, for, for, for many years yes. we haven't been at the Arts Center, yes. It's a big um, confusion for a lot of people, but we actually perform three shows a year at Morgan Park Academy Bear Theater, which is right, the old Beverly Arts Center on, on 111th and um, Bell. I've never been there before, so I didn't realize that there were, like, what that theater, I don't know what that theater looks like. Tell me a little bit about what that, how that works, how, how much can you seat in there approximately? Like, what's it like going to a show there? The Bear Theater uh, has a very welcoming lobby, and as you enter into the theater, uh, the theater has received a makeover, and it's got some great new colors, and it looks really fresh and clean. Uh, seats 425 people. Uh, with a full it's a nice crowd for, yeah. for a community awesome. theater place. Awesome. Yeah. And the stage is proscenium with stage left, stage right. Mm-hmm. We're very lucky because not a lot of community theaters, especially after COVID, have a full access to a theater like we do, a real theater. So Was that hard? I mean, did it take, did people lose places to do community theater during the pandemic and yeah, they, they, they weren't able to get theaters. back to it now? A lot or? of them struggled financially to recoup. You know, people don't do this for the money. They do it for the love of the art. So, um We were fortunate enough that we have been in existence so long and we have such great donors and great supporters that we were able to financially recoup from COVID. But there were so many theaters, especially if you go on the north side, that have just shut their doors because they can't rebuild from it, from the losses they took. How big's your troupe right now? Do you have like a set number that does all the shows? Or is it like if you get a script where you need a lot of people you put out a casting call. Yeah, so we're membership-based. We're a membership-based organization. Right now we have um, a little over 100 members, and we're always looking for more members. Anybody can join the Guild. It's 25 a year for an individual, 40 for a family. Um, And our members really are the backbone. They do everything for us, with us, and a lot of them participate in the shows. Um, Sometimes we have a lot of families. Sometimes we have a lot of young people. It depends on what our show season is. So we just announced our new show season, and we have some great options for for young people and families. Um, and we just did, like, our last season was Legally Blonde, Grease, 
and steel magnolias. So we had a lot of um, really great energetic young people. So we have a wide mixture of, of age ranges. And as we sit here with our new friends from the Beverly Theater Guild, I am reminded of a place right nearby where they're putting on their performances. And that is the location of Tom Walsh, your Edward Jones financial advisor. He's on 111th and Kedzie. Not exactly Beverly, but he's close. Tom has my money. He has Bill's money. Mike has missed the boat. He will end up a pauper and alone. Look, if you're trying to figure out what to do with your money, how to make it work for you, you're saving for your retirement, wherever you are in life, Tom sits down and works with you, asks you a bunch of questions, tries to figure out what your risk is, what you want to work towards, and then he puts together a plan, and then he's constantly in contact with you. He's been doing it for decades. I trust him. I think you should too. Local guy, went to Brother Rice, hangs out in Blue Island a lot. Feel like he may have voted BI, but you never know. I know he hangs in Lamont as well. I want you to reach out to him, 773-779-0023, or stop in and see him right on the corner of 111th and Kedzie, 3201 West 111th Street. Now, this is interesting to me. Every time I have somebody down here, like, we're doing it, we're doing our annual play. And I oh, go, yeah. okay, and I get like, and you have a, you have like a slate that you put out. Because I know my, my parents love one of the things they do every year is that they ask me for a Christmas gift for gift certificates to Drury Lane. Then they go to Drury Lane where they have the season. They get to pick where they want to go. And then all they do is they turn around and they bring their two granddaughters because it's like that's their night with their two granddaughters. Right. And they bring them to Drury Lane. I'm like, I feel like I'm giving them the gift as much as I'm giving it to my parents. But like I know that they'll give out a book and they'll have a season. And I always thought that was the only place around where there was theater where it was like a full season. They were doing all kinds of productions. But you guys are doing multiple things throughout the year. Right. So theater is kind of tiered. So like there's the downtown theater where it's like the big guys and they're professionals and they're doing their thing. And then there's these like regional theaters like Drury Lane, Paramount. Um, I think Rialto's one where they kind of link Marriott Lincolnshire where they do like they're they're also usually professional people and then we have the community theater circuit and some community theaters do one show a year and they do a wonderful job and that's a big fundraiser for them but we're fortunate enough to do three shows and then we actually do a summer show um, this year we're going to be doing in July shameless plug for the last weekend of July we're doing Rock of Ages at Bourbon Street so we've oh, been wow. collaborating we did Footloose with them right before the pandemic and this is our second collaboration with Bourbon Street. So, so like the movie Rock of Ages that I've seen yes. with Tom Cruise in it. Uh, yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah, he was and, in that uh, movie. Julianne Hoffman. All kinds of, yeah. yeah she was amazing in that movie. Yeah. It was a great movie. So it was actually started out as a stage play, and we're going to be producing that in July on the stage at Bourbon Street. So they so. started as a play. They made it into a movie. My it, The only reason I knew anything about it is my wife was like, I want to watch this. And I was like, come on. It's and so then, good. Like, I got dragged into this thing. And I remember sitting there and I was about 20 minutes into it. And then all of a sudden I was just totally into it. And it's really like one of those ones that like sneaks up on you. So you guys are going to be doing that. We're going to be doing that in July. So we have um, a really good group of people working on that. So a lot of the really cool part for me is that a lot of our um, staff and our people that are in the shows even – We've been casting a larger net where they come from all parts of the city because they know we do a good job. They know that they want to be a part of what we're doing. But um, a lot of them are community-based people. So we're really fortunate. Um, and we've worked on building relationships with other theater groups in the community, too, so that we're kind of all sharing resources. So, Wayne, it's going to be the Wizard of Oz next week? Is no, that the Wizard deal? Wizard of Oz, yes. Wizard of Oz. Opening night. Is it is it tough to put on something that everybody's seen before? Because there's so many expectations, like they almost know every part of it. And so the, like it, they're probably even a little bit more critical. Does that add pressure to it? Yes, it certainly does. Uh, this is the biggest show uh, financially that the Beverly Theater Guild has ever attempted. Uh, the budgets. Do you really have flying monkeys? Beyond, like what costs pretty close <laughs> to having flying monkeys. He'll be flying but somewhere. Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> one of the biggest shows in quite quite a while that we've spent quite a bit of money on. You either do it right or you don't do it at all. So we are doing our best to make this show the most popular experience that people are going to enjoy and it's uh, in rehearsal at the moment and they're doing a tremendous job so what causes all the costs is it the sets the big sets is that what you guys are doing yeah the sets the costuming the rent. rights the rights the rent for the facility the rent, right. um and then we we are community based but we do pay our um, director music director and choreographer so that's just kind of our standard so we've done that forever um and those people are, are paid staff members so 
Um, yeah, it's mostly just like a lot of special effects in it. There's going to be a lot of lighting things. And a live and orchestra. Live orchestra. The Beverly Theater Guild uh, prides itself on always having live orchestration. I was going to ask you about that. So you have an orchestra pit always, inside of there. So you're, always. you're seating over 400 people. You got a live orchestra. You got the big sets. I mean, you tried to downplay your your theater as community theater, but you seem bigger than some of the community theaters that I've seen in the area. We Yeah, we are. We um, actually... The South Side is really rich in a lot of theater opportunities, so um, we're very lucky. But yes, we have the seating capacity that is um, much higher than a lot of the other theaters around. I think we're bigger than most of them, um, and we do that. And we also have the the three. I mean, the three shows a year, so you can buy a season ticket and see everything. And we're really. I mean, we're we, it's community theater, but it's at a community theater price for a downtown quality show. You know, that's the thing that I've learned doing this podcast. And you're talking about how you've been listening to the show for a while. Mm-hmm. You came down here and saw the nine foot homemade oak bar. You're like, Amazing. it's real. And you're like, this is incredible. And 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 Wayne, he's never looked, listened to a podcast in his life. So we're going to see if we can convert him. But you, you, you've listened to this show. When I started Southside Pod, I kept thinking to myself like, okay, well, we'll do restaurant reviews and we'll go to breweries. And all that stuff's a lot of fun. I was like, maybe we'll get some musical artists. But the thing that I discovered is the amount of theater that is on the South side. And you know what? Just for the same reason that I thought they don't pay attention to the the best restaurants on the South side when they put out their top 30 restaurants in Chicago, they don't pay attention to all the different things that are happening on the South side. We're like the ignored area in, in this metropolitan, in this metropolitan area. You're also ignored. I think a little bit with theater because I didn't know until I started doing this show, how much of it there is. Tell me a little bit about the scene. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of really great community theaters out here um, that are, it's a different base than what you would see up north. So up, up north, you see a lot of like storefront theaters and, you know, drop in comedy shows and stuff like that. Out here, we have full family shows. So Beverly Arts Center, us, Oaklawn Park District has a great program, Drama Group in Chicago Heights. They're all really great things happening with great shows going on with great people. And a lot of the people are in a lot of the stuff because it's in their own community. So that's been one of our goals in the last several years is to kind of promote that to the community and to let people know that it's happening one and that they can come and see it and that it's affordable. Cause I mean, wizard of Oz, we have families coming of five and six kids. We can't make it unaffordable. We can't make it something that they can't support. So right. Um, we really Things are try expensive and, these days. Yeah, I don't so know if you've noticed. They, they're, not, <laughs> I know. they're not only adding a service charge shopping. on your bill when you go and you buy something in some of these places, but they want you to tip on tax. It's a little expensive it is, these days. It yeah. is. So we want to keep it um, fun and affordable. And, you know, it's really important, I think, especially in the world that we're in now with everything going on, that we do have that little two and a half hours of fantasy and you can escape and, and go to a different world for two and a half hours that's not reality so it's it's great for kids and families and parents and this season we're doing um guys and dolls in the fall and that'll be a fun show um if you saw the original movie with marlon brando it was one of his and frank sinatra right yeah. he was in the original one and then we're doing um present laughter. present laughter which is a straight show we do so we do a musical in the beginning of the season musical at the end and a straight show or comedy in the middle right so our straight show is present laughter and then our spring show is going to be godspell the new revival so it's going to be super super you've cool. got a slate and you got rock of ages coming we up got rock in of the ages coming of in july yeah wow all right so if somebody wants to check out what you guys do and wants to learn more about it i see the website beverly theater guild.org and they spell the theater with the re at the end so it's fancy it is yeah we're classy (laughs) out here on the south side (laughs) beverly theater guild.org and you can check it out do they buy the tickets through that as well So they can purchase tickets online or at our hotline which is uh 773 btg tix t-i-x-s and they can go into our box office and buy tickets there but the easiest way is online always yeah, and then when you come, it's not just the theater experience. We have local breweries. Open Outcry does our, um, you know, has some prov- provisions there for you us. Open we Outcry have, beer over there. We do. We have um, Look some. At this. We have some pop and water and soft drinks and all the fun stuff for the kids, and we make it really fun. We're gonna have the Emerald City in the lobby this time, so come to the Emerald City. This sounds like it could be date night. It could be family night. This sounds Everything, like a lot of fun. All of the above, sir. This is awesome. Well, I, I'm glad that you discovered us so we could discover you. Thank you. I I really appreciate that. Wizard of Oz is taking place April 28th 
through the 30th. And uh, Katie, uh, thank you so much. Wayne, uh, did, did you survive? I survived. He, was, he came down and he was like, I got to sit in front of a microphone. <laughs> If you've been injured at work, then you need someone who will fight for the care and compensation you deserve. The insurance companies will look out for themselves and their bottom lines, not you. I'm Matthew Coleman, partner and head of the work injury department at the law offices of Parenti and Norm. My team and I have the experience, dedication, and proven results it takes to fight for your rights. Call or text me today at 312-641-5926 or visit us on the web at pninjurylaw.com. Okay, so before we have this announcement, here coming up for the battle of the south side we have to decide what we're given the winner we have to decide what we're given the winner so whoever wins between blue island and lamont they're going to get something from us so i had i had them pull some of the best stuff best ideas to what to for what to give the winners of the battle of the south side oh you did this on instagram you pulled the pulled the right. listeners so okay. we, we pulled we pulled the best comments and the best ideas from you out there listening for what we should give the winners. Oh, that's probably went south a couple so times. So we have <laughs> we have host a bar crawl. Perfect. Meet that's up awesome. at the local brew house. Okay. Uh, have a whole show dedicated to them with their own song. You'll have to whip nice. something up if we do this. Okay. Maybe we actually change the title of the show. Like Lamont Pod or Blue Lamont Island Pod. Lamont Pod or Blue Island Pod. That would like be kind of okay. cool. Just for one week. Okay. Winning Town gets the trophy keys to the basement. You're going to give someone the actual keys, keys to your house? No, not the keys to my house. That's a terrible <laughs> idea. Uh, we have a, a restaurant in the losing town should donate dinner to the people in the winning town and have a raffle over it. That might okay. get really complicated. Yeah, right. I don't that know, like that. Losing mayor gets punched in the face. That's, That's not going to go over I don't well. think they're going to go for that. No, one. that'd be Here, cool. This one's great. Chris should spend 24 hours in that town doing everything he can in that time nice. period. Like a, almost why, like a, why not Chris, Bill, and Mike? Well, I mean, I, I got to, you know, I could be there for a little bit. Probably... What were you going to say? You got a family? <laughs> I was going to say that. I got three that. kids, I was going to say that. I don't know. <laughs> I got a family. You're always down here drinking. I forget about them. <laughs> uh, they get to have a, you get to host a party. The town gets to host a party with Southside Pod live casting from that town. That's kind of cool. Live casting is a little tough. I would record there. Yeah. I would broadcast out to people. The people at home would hear it on the future show. Right, I could right. probably pull that off. Okay. A um, billion dollars. No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> what do people think we have going on here? Know. A lot of bar crawls. Bar crawl comes that up a lot. That makes sense because uh, you think about both towns. I mean, I lived in Lamont and it was, we used to say it's churches and bars. That's right. all Lamont was. I mean, right. it's a lot more than that. <laughs> I don't want to get people You're in trouble. You're going to get Lamont's going to be there too. But, you know, there's a lot of more breweries and more high class joints and little, you know, gin mills and taverns now. And Blue Island, the same way. We got breweries, we got nicer bars. So they're, they're, breweries and bars are a big part of both towns. Right. So I that think, makes sense. Okay. So bar crawl for sure. Absolutely. Bar crawl for sure. We're going to do that anyway. If I was going to invite some people, maybe we'll get a free drink out of it. <laughs> Before we get to the big reveal for the Battle of the South Side, it's now time for your South Side Bulletin Board brought to you by Cool Clouds Vapor Shop. Quitting smoking is hard, and Cool Clouds wants to give you an alternative. A full taster bar, great CBD products located on the northeast corner of 95th and Kedzie. See all they have to offer at coolcloudsvapor.com or stop in and see them today. 3148 West 95th Street in Evergreen Park. There have been several spring markets going on at local breweries. There's one coming up next weekend, the 29th of April in Willow Springs. The Artisan Market at Imperial Oak Brewing, 501 Willow Boulevard in Willow Springs. Southside Pod is going to go out there. I'm not setting up a table. I'm just stopping by. But look for me. 11 a.m. until 5 p.m. on Saturday the 29th. Craft beer, local artists, confection makers, and dreamers. Plus, there'll be a food pop-up as well. The same group that is behind all of those brewery events is getting ready for the return of Mayfest to Blue Island on the 13th of May. It kicks off at noon and goes until 5 on Old Western Avenue. Over 100 artisan vendors coming to Blue Island on the 13th. Music, libations, all kinds of establishments participating in this South Side Pod will be on scene there as well. That thing was a blast last year. I'm excited about it. That's why I'm talking about it so early. Meanwhile, this weekend, we'll stay in Blue Island. Friday, April 21st, 6 p.m., 
Wheels North at Blue Island Beer Company. They play your favorite music, but it's bluegrassy. And since we're talking about Blue Island, we've got to talk about who's head-to-head with them in Lamont this weekend on Saturday, April 22nd, starting at 10 a.m. and going until 4. It's Earth Day Festival at the Forge in Lamont. They have a hug-a-tree nature trail. Does that mean people are just walking down the trail hugging trees? Vendor Village, activities for kids, workshops for all ages, conservation projects, live entertainment, food trucks, and so much more. That's going to be a party out there. The event is free but they would love a $5 donation. Seems like it's worth it. Getting out the Tinley, Hailstorm Brewing Company has live music on Friday night and Saturday night, both nights, 6 until 9 p.m. Great tap room over there at Hailstorm in Tinley Park. And then on Friday night, one more reminder, Thirsty Beaver Crestwood, Days of Grunge is playing. Want to get nostalgic for the 90s? 5599 127th Street. Our big reveal... Coming up here in moments, brought to you by SidSauce.net. Small batch flavor pack sauces. The peppers grown on the south side, developed. Those hot sauces are, I sound like Yoda with that sentence, on the south side. And then they deliver the hot sauce to your door. It's the only place I get my hot sauce from. See everything they have to offer at SidSauce.net. I have something I'm looking for as we're getting ready to open up the the winner here for yeah. the, uh, the Battle of the South Side. What I'm most curious is... Did Blue Island get so angry at you that they didn't vote? <laughs> I, I mean, they can't. I mean, it's a, it's, I've been in Blue Island many, many times. Yeah. They know how to take a joke. Do they? They know how to make That's fun of themselves. That's the question. They know how to make fun That's of themselves. That's the question, because if, if Blue Island got mad at you, then they probably didn't turn out for the vote. If Blue Island takes a joke... They probably turn out for the vote. That's well, at least that, okay, that's my okay. theory. I've been thinking about this for the I last couple of days. I think they could take a joke. I mean, I, I've heard people like lifelong Blue Islanders make similar jokes, right? You know, I mean, just in jest because they know it's not true, and it's it's that's how that's what a joke is, it's, right? You know, it's like you walk around telling people you're handsome. It's just, absolutely it's just a joke. right. Everyone knows not I'm true. not. I'm terrible looking. No, exactly. Everybody okay, so so that's the first thing I'm looking for. Secondly, I think I, I've been sitting here thinking about this. I I want to give the runner-up something as well. Okay. So here's so what I want to do. Win. Here's what I want to do. I think both towns get a bar crawl. Nice. Okay? Right now, as I say it, Blue Island and Lamont are each getting a Southside Pod bar crawl. Fantastic. Okay? We will set it up. We'll do it at some point during the summer. I like summer bar crawls. Yeah. I want to get out of the way before we get to Oktoberfest season because that is just yeah. so much drinking. Right. So we'll do it during the summer. We will do two bar crawls, okay? Nice, nice. So we'll get the social media to start putting out for both towns. Who would you want involved in the bar crawl? We'll talk to the people that we know in those towns. Yeah. We have some pretty close connections. We've been to Pollyanna already out in Vermont. We've been to Blue Island Beer Company, so we're going to involve both the breweries, I would imagine, at some point there. I think about Rock Island Public House yeah. on Blue Island as a place that we'd probably go to. Um, there are some there are some places I've bounced around to in the what was a cornerstone tavern we were there that's a really neat bar yeah, yeah. right next to Pollyanna that I can draw the Lamont one sure. probably oh, from yeah. memory for all the places Absolutely, we've been out right. there so I think a bar crawl in both places not only says congratulations for making it to the championship but it gives us an extra party that yeah. we can have with the listeners okay, okay? Nice. so we're getting a party in Lamont and a party in Blue Island just for making it there but is the winner going to get something special the winner is going I'll do the 24 hour thing what I'll do it you're going to spend 24, I'll spend 24 hours, hours, in, hours in the winning town, bouncing around, we'll, and the entire 24 hours. Wait, can you do 24? Like, these, I don't think there's there's hotels like there. Like, you'd have to stay on so the I street. So I have to sleep in the street? That's what I'm saying. We should make it do 12, <laughs> maybe. 24 would be tough. Okay. We'll check with local city ordinances okay, to see whether or not street. we can pull Set off 24 hours. Somewhere. Maybe it's just 12 well, hours. Yeah, maybe we can find an Airbnb or you maybe can something sleep like at a maybe, listener's house. Maybe a listener can put me up in their home. <laughs> yeah, that's sounds... And I wake up chopped up. Completely safe, yeah. <laughs> now who's making the jokes, Chris? <laughs> I could end up chopped up in either town. If somebody He's gonna keep me in their home. Who knows? Okay, I get nervous. I wherever spend I'm a at. day. How about that? I could be at the spend Vatican. The I could town. be at the Vatican. The Pope would be like, "You want to stay overnight?" I'm like, "I don't know. I don't know if I want to stay over at your place. I don't know you very well." Okay, you'll spend a day in the town. Okay, I'll spend a day in the town, like and we'll rename that show that all that airs that town pod. Amazing. So we'll rename Southside Pod for that week. That's. I think that that's a good way to celebrate the fact that they won the Battle of the South. Side. Nice. Okay. Does that work for you? I think that's great. All right. Can you, Can you open up the damn envelope now? I'm so excited. Open up the envelope. Okay. Music. <laughs> Here we go. 
I was told this was close. I was told this was off by just a percentage. It had to be close. There, I was told this was less than 51 I watched Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the Blue Island Chamber of Commerce, the Lamont... Can we, uh, the, the Village of the Lamont village themselves. Lamont. They were both yeah. retweeting. They were both yeah. posting. They were yeah. asking. I Towns had friends, were doing it. friends from Lamont uh, messaging me saying, how could they vote more? They were all voting. Everyone in the office is voting. My wife's friends in Blue Island were resharing everything. It, it had to be close. Here we go. The win. Oh man, look at this. The winner is. The winner is. I can see it. You can't. What right is now. it? The, win- the winner on. is. And you know what? I ain't thinking uh, back. Thinking back to my previous theory about whether or not you drove voters away. Just say it. Blue Island. No way. By a hair Woo! is the winner Jeez. of the Battle of the South Side. Well Congratulations done, to that. You know what? It was funny today. Was talking with one of our guests that was sitting down there at the bar, who's doing something in Beverly, who's part of that theater group, who was pulling for Blue Island, even though Blue Island had beaten Beverly earlier in the tournament. You know? Like, it was like, well, if we can't win, we want... And that could have also been a factor. (laughs) Because the Beverly people were like, well, we can't come in anything less than second. Like, they could still look at Lamont and be like, we had to face them early. Right, You faced them at the end. You know what I'm saying? All that stuff, I think, came into play in this thing. All that stuff came into play. Meanwhile, hometowns trying to figure out how to get more votes. I don't know how you do it. We should do just that. I mean, next year, just an honor. We should do the Battle of Hometown. <laughs> just be just different things in hometown versus each other. I thought about other battles this summer. Like, I'm going to wait till next year. We'll do this around the final four yeah, next right. year. But I thought about other things. Like, I think we need to have, like, a pizza battle this year. Someone did that. They copied us, by the way. I saw it. They it copied like WGN us? copied really? it and did, like, a battle of pizza. Like, did right they really? after ours came WGN out. WGN yeah. is copying us? I believe so. WGN's copying us? We'll get you, Baumgarten. Oh, we're coming for you. <laughs> we're coming. Don't come down to the south side. You can't handle it. You stay up there in your ivory tower or whatever that tower is made out of. Well done, though, B.I. I'm proud of you. Yeah, good for them. That's awesome. We got to think about where we're going to do the bar crawl for them. Do I you have it. a place off the top of your head? I mean, me, Blue Island Beer Company, we got to hit, and we got to end up at Rock Island Public House. I don't know if you start there or if you end I was, there. I was more the, thinking about the 12 hours you have to spend there, and I got a great breakfast coming. Oh, yeah? Where, where, where am I going? A D-Mars. Okay. Best breakfast in Blue Island. All right. That, that, check it out. Okay. Right we'll have to reach out to them and see if we can start there. Good stuff. Yeah. And it might. And then, you know, I, I was thinking if you pick the right day for that, you end up at the Lyric Theater. Oh, yeah. You nice. Know, at some point, you go do something at the Lyric Theater, and then you go have a nightcap someplace. You see, the thing with that one is, Rock Island Public House is open so late, we might get close to 24 That's true. Hours. That's true. <laughs> I can be in there until 4 in the morning. Right. And I could have started at the breakfast place at 6. Right. So I might get 22 hours in Blue Island without a problem. Right. It's possible. Yeah. As long somebody's as you gonna, Somebody's going to have to carry me home. Right. <laughs> Too bad the hospital's not there in case you get stabbed. <laughs> I kid, of course. <laughs> you guys won. Shut up about it, all right? It's the South Side. It's the South Side. It's the South Side Pod. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in to the South Side Pod. Y'all come back now, here.